that exist in statute. Mm -hmm. um, it just helps bring shape to, the, um, to our organization and governance and makes it easier for us to know who does what and how we do what we do. Um, as Lisa said, yes, um, we did add a, a more clarified section on what the officers are and what their various assigned duties are. Um, we talked a little bit about, um, da, 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 what was the section? There's a, a list in here about um, uh. the committees. We hadn't articulated a lot of the committees. At one point, we our only standing committee was the facilities committee. Yeah. Um, we've <laughs> added two others, including the creation of a policy committee. Um, one of the early charges that um, I received was to do an evaluation of our policies. Yep. Um, once we start digging into the policies, as we did with the bylaws here, I think we're going to find that there may be opportunity for us to spend a little bit more time in committee discussing some of the, the conditions that um, maybe we haven't looked at in a couple years. Um, historically, the policy has been readopted wholesale every two years. Um, if we have a policy committee, um, we can take that really daunting task of reviewing the entire manual at once and kind of break it out into sections over a period of several meetings and over the course of a year mm -hmm. and work our way through that and give structure to it, not unlike what you've got here in your bylaws, um, and apply that to the rest of the policy manual. Um, so that's the, that's what you're seeing established there. And Kathleen, is uh, the president, is the chair of the policy committee. Uh -huh. So given the snow out there <laughs> and the roads are getting slippery and not too and worse, uh, Kathleen needs to appoint who the members of the policy committee will be. Is anybody here interested in serving on that and then conduct a meeting? Probably it's best not to do it during the board meeting, but to set a time for the meeting to start reviewing it. Mm -hmm. I could probably pick that up. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, I'm... I have four you, months. I know. You know. <laughs> so, unfortunately, okay, so, I would be interested, but I have four yes. months. Yes. Okay. So Dan is our chief, and then Kathleen will appoint the rest of the members. Okay. So thank you. Yep. Is this? Uh, do you want grammar corrections at this point? This or is the void. Yeah. Start sure. playing we with can, it. We can take the um, review in it. As, Just as a discussion couple. now. Sure. Just a couple. Page A nine. Uh, and what you can do is just pass it along to him, because you don't. We can do, do, you can just pass your comments okay. to him. I think that may be a little. I just have those two pages. Oh, okay. great. Okay. Okay. Director's report. And so what we've agreed to is basically we will review them in committee and then bring them forward for the board to vote on. Okay. okay. All right. Um, from my director's report this month, um, right up top, I want to congratulate the library for its um, recent receipt of an ALA um, Public Programs Office um, grant award. Um, the library is one of 50 libraries to receive the American Creed Community Conversations Project Award. Um, I've got more information about the content of that there in my report. Um, but what we're really excited about is how this um, this initiative is coming forth rather quickly for us right here this spring, and we've got a lot of programming that's going to be following in support of that. Um, and it happens to dovetail very nicely with our strategic plan initiative to do more of these types of community conversations. Mm -hmm. um, so we're really excited to be able to host this project, and I want to thank um, and publicly recognize Adult Services Assistant Manager Nancy Wagner for uh, drafting the grant application and for helping to coordinate um, and implement this project. So we're really excited about that. And I'd just like to point out, you say we're, we are partnering, partnering with the League of Women Voters of Wilmette for this project. So thank you, League of Women Voters of Wilmette. So when they say American Creed Community Conversations, what exactly is American Creed? I'm just curious. Um, that defines who we are as Americans. So um, part of this conversation is going to be, um, it's, it's part of a civic engagement initiative to identify what it means to be an American. Okay. Um, other items to, to share this month, one of our big initiatives um, from the back end, just kind of towards the end of my report, is that CCS has um, officially uh, integrated the, the catalog records for uh, the Morton Grove Public Library. Um, we're excited to welcome them in. Our public can now take advantage of the collections at the Morton Grove Library, and they too can enjoy uh, membership in CCS. 
there was a bit of downtime that was associated with that, and the staff responded really well, uh, performed excellent customer service despite um, the, the downtime and, and lack of access to the catalog. Um, we were back up and running within a, a matter of a day, I think, our backlog was all cleared up, um, which is pretty outstanding. Um, that's a good dry run for us with this, too, because I think later this year um, we're about to welcome another library. Tomorrow I'm going to the CCS Governing Board meeting mm -hmm. where the Governing Board will be voting to accept the Indian Trails Public Library. Mm -hmm. um, so it's very likely that by the end of this calendar year we'll have another such downtime. So does it go down for a day? It goes down for a series of days. Um, we were down over the weekend, Saturday, Sunday, and mm -hmm. a portion of Monday before we were back up. Wow. Um, those are busy times for us, but um, we elected to go, um, uh, the board elected to go, the CCS governing board elected to have the downtime take place over the weekend as that would have less of a, a shorter window of time versus over a period of, say, Monday through Friday. Mm -hmm. um, they took care of all that work over the weekend. Well, and Indian Trails is considerably larger. Than Morgan. It certainly is. So is there would be more Wheeling? involved with that. Yes. yes. Um, so that was a big initiative. Um, one of the big pieces that um, we want to share tonight is um, our One Book Everybody Reads selection, The Lake on Fire by Rosellen Brown. Um, that event is scheduled to take place on Sunday, May 5th at Wilmette Junior High. Uh, that's our author event. We have a number of other programs that are going to be announced as part of um, our next newsletter that will be um, telling you a little bit more about um, the, the programs that are going to be involved in that. Um, presentations on Maxwell Street, the labor movement, the World Columbian Exposition, mm -hmm. um, music from the exhibition, we'll have a film program, and we're also going to be having a bus trip down to the Dry House Museum in Chicago. Oh, nice. Um, so stay tuned for more information about that. And that's one of the wonderful things that the Friends do, so thanks for the support for the Friends <laughs> of the Wilmette Public Library in terms of that one book, Wilmette. So thanks. Excuse me. Um, I think that kind of hits the high points of what I wanted to cover in the director's report. Did you all have any questions from what you saw in my report? Um, have, has it been decided about the CPR training? So we're still trying to coordinate with the fire department on that. They were unable to take this, the first dates that they had given us. They had to withdraw those. So we're still coordinating with that. We expect to have at least two trainings within the month of February. That's nice that we're able to do that at the library because there are other trains are around the village. Mm -hmm. um, we need to allow space for that. Um, they limit it to 15 people, but we need the auditorium space in order to host that, and that's part of the coordination of that. Sure. Mm -hmm. Good. You want to say anything about circulation programs? Um, I think that covers it. Okay. What's uh, Just a question about the uh, photo slide negative scanner. This is something new that were purchased or? You know. Yes, um, if you have um, any photos or slides, any analog formats, mm -hmm. um, the library mm -hmm. offers digitization resources within the computer room to allow you to do that. That's so great. get those slide reels out and bring them in and we can help get <laughs> you set up and digitize those for you. Okay, good. Each person does themselves or you get as a service that you can print? No, you, that's for the patron to do. To device you, we, yeah. we, we can teach not, you. And then right, someone else can train <laughs> They can you teach you. It's yeah. like when you go to Walgreens, you can do it, but this is free, right? right. Yeah. Okay. But Our your staff labor. Is and when you end up, what's the, t do you take away with the CD or you can bring or a, a you can file? Bring a, you, can bring a, you can bring a flash drive or you can bring a disc. Um, okay. Like, so, yeah. Good. Nice. Do it yourself. Mm -hmm. And I guess as my last point, I would encourage you all, if you've not already, to participate in our winter reading program. Yes. Um, you can learn more about that online. Um, mm -hmm. There are lots of incentive prizes that we're offering this year as a part of that program, so we'd encourage you to participate. And as trustees, we're allowed to do that? Or? Absolutely. Okay, I wasn't sure. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I participated in all the Also funded by, by the friends. friends. Okay. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Okie dokie. To Facilities and time. Equipment hmm? Committee report. To bingo this Trustee George, do you have anything else? No, I don't really have anything to add because okay. everything is pretty much um, reflected in the updated plan mm -hmm. that we, um, you know, we basically adopted most of the changes that we discussed and worked through in committee. Um, 
but again, and thank you to the members of the public who um, came to the facilities meeting, but also came to the open house. Um, it was fun just to talk with some uh, patrons at length about you know, their thoughts and just their thoughts about the library and Wilmette in general. So I thought those were both, um, you know, having the, the extra facilities meetings we've had with input from the public and also our um, open house was really valuable. So I think that's really um, all I have to say. I just wanna, I'm grateful for that. And I, as I said, I think we ended up with a better product in the end. So well, if I may say so, yep. I think you did a really nice job running the facilities committees oh. that we've had. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's, it's been a great experience. It's been fun. So, okay. Nice to meet our some more members of the community. So that's good. Information items. Nomination patient papers for the four seats on the seven-member WPL Board of Trustees that are up for election have been filled by, filed by Joan Fishman, Jan Harshi, myself, and Maria Josefina Cannon Riddle. Mm -hmm. It's uncontested. The election will be Tuesday, April 2nd, and the seats are for a four-year term expiring. President's Day Library Legislation Breakfast is going to be held Monday, February 18th at the Arboretum Club. I'm joining Anthony, but anybody else is welcome to come. It starts at 7, 8.30, mm -hmm. even though half the time you got it. 7.45, really, if you want to get food, because it goes quickly. It's continental breakfast. <laughs> but it's a chance to meet some of the legislators. If anybody's interested, the information's there, and it's a good time to see what's happening. Yeah, and it, just on that note, I, I received an email from Cynthia about um, meetings that are more targeted towards um, services for seniors, and um, I'm going to go to the one at uh, the North Shore Senior Center. Okay. So if anybody else wants to go to that, I think it's February 1st, I'm pretty sure. I'm not sure, but it was in Cynthia's email, just if anybody else wants to go. Oh, okay. Okay. I missed that one. Yeah, oh. it's something. Lots of fun. Yeah. Do you, Cynthia, do you remember the name of the organization? Anyway. Is that with legislators? I think it is, yes. They're, well, they're trying to encourage public officials to go to learn more about um, uh, policies towards senior mm -hmm. citizens um, and services for senior citizens. So that's what it's about. Mm -hmm. Okay. And do you want to talk about National Library Legislation? Well, National Library Legislation Day. Well, you all can read the rest. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and well, basically, there isn't a national legislation until 2020. Because, yeah. the, because conference the conference is, is going to be yeah. there. Yeah. yeah, right. And so it's postponed a year. And we it's talked about one book we met. And thanks for the help to the staff for the holiday party. It was wonderful. Mm -hmm. And nice. it was hosted by shelving and switchboard. And the desserts were really good. <laughs> <laughs> so, any questions or comments regarding the communication in the back? No. Maria, Maria got two good mentions for, for her yeah. work. Okay. And Sherry read a... Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. She's, meant sure she's a really... I meant Sherry and some Maria. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. I move that we adjourn. Oh, it's I get my yeah. I, ILA. 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 Yeah. ILA. Oh, the ILA committee report. Okay, because that's not on the agenda. But do you want to go? Sure. Mm -hmm. Just a couple of kind of fun things. Well, fun, interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, there had been an article a few months back about uh, all this circus memor memorabilia and where it was going to be placed and it turns out that it was placed at Illinois State University's Milner Library in Bloomington Normal and this has one of the nation's top collections of circus re circus related books etc cetera, etc cetera. and you may ask the question well why did it end up there partially because at the time when there were circuses here that was the way they traveled down state was to go through that direction. And so stopping in Bloomington Normal was a regular stop for the circus as they were going. So they have, if you're interested, it's supposed to be just an absolutely wonderful exhibit. Then there was a um, Money Smart Week is coming up. Um, and there's a traveling exhibition for children 
I don't know if this would be something the library might be interested in, thinking money for kids. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like the money week that we have for adults, uh, where you can come in and learn how to handle your finances or do, you know, ask questions, do different things. But this is for children from ages 7 to 11. That might be something maybe not right now, but in the future that we may want to uh, think about. And then the annual conference is coming up October 22nd to 24th, 2019 at the Tinley Park Convention Center, and it's called Shift, Where Will You Grow? So there'll be a lot of interesting programs there. Uh, one other particularly interesting article that I've been following, um, there is a library on the border of Vermont and Canada. So it's USA and Canada. So if you go in one door, you're going in through Canada. Uh, okay. If you go in the other door uh, or come out the other door, you're coming out of the United States. And it's quite a uh, controversial location for a library. There's only the one door. <laughs> so people have to go in. And it turns out that there are a number of Iranian students, particularly, who have been studying in the United States, who have wanted to get together with their parents or relatives or whomever 